Hello and welcome to episode 5 of the SQL for Data Analysis series. Congratulations if you made it this far. And today we're going to be looking into our pubs data set that we previously imported. And we're also going to look at the group by statement, the order by keyword and aggregate functions and look at how we can begin to query our data, but group it together, aggregate, find things like max, average, the count of customers um, or authors or whatever that may be. We're going to start off looking at our titles table. And we're going to see how we can begin to aggregate things, bundle them up and explore data in more depth and give people better insights and answers in an instant. So if we select all from titles, we're in the pubs dataset view, so, so we're fine to select all just like so. Remember the semicolon at the end for best practice. So we can see we've got titles and we've got types of titles. So this might be something that we want to aggregate. And you can see here, I'm introducing the select and then I'm using the count aggregate function. So there are a few aggregate functions. There's count with your parentheses. There's max for maximum, min for minimum, sum and average. And this means that we can group result sets by one or more columns. So if we go back to our original example, where we can see we have, we're going to use select the count of the title as titles, we need to rename that virtual column. And we're going to say from titles, we can see that what it does here, it just counts up the number of titles that we have, and it returns 18. So already we can see how much titles we have available within our data set. Now that's a, a good starting point for insights, but it's not as powerful as it could be. So how could we, we make this more powerful? Well, potentially we could look to add in that type that we saw, the type of the title, the type of the publication. And however, now if we press execute or F5, you'll see that it says the column titles.type is invalid because it's not contained in either an aggregate function or the group by clause. So we already have the aggregate function, that's the count of the titles. Now we need to add in this new piece that we're going to explore the group by statement. So let's say I want to group the results by type and you see here, I get back much more powerful insight. So I don't just see 18, I see these segmented and we can also do the select all from titles, execute this underneath uh, and we can see what's happening. Essentially from this type column, it's grouping the amount of titles by the business. We can see there's two mod cook lines that translate. So it's just grouping everything together by results set. Remember, if you want, if you have multiple queries alongside each other, you can also highlight one of your queries and click execute or F5 and that will isolate it and, and run just that one specific query. So this is good. We can now see um, the groups. However, we can actually add in this order by keyword and what we can do here, we can say order by the count title, add our semicolon to the end of order by count of the title. And there we go, it starts to order things. Now, as default, it orders it in ascending value. You could type out ASC, um, but you don't really need to because that's the default. Now, we see if we execute this, it produces exactly the same result. However, most of the times you want to see from, from the best results to the worst. So we would usually use a descending value where it goes from the highest to the lowest number. We can also implement what we learned before and, and we could limit this so we could say the top n so the top amount of, of values that we want to see the top three or top four in this example and we get, can begin to piece together what we've learned and we're already starting to see much more powerful data insights now we can move into another table let's say authors within this pubs data set um, so we've got an author ID that looks quite relevant and we've also got a city. So potentially we could break things down, slice and dice it that way um, using our group by statement. So we could say select all from authors like we've done before, but really we want to probably return specific columns. So let's say we want to return the city column. And again, 
we'll take the count of the author ID because that's just going to give us one value for each line returned. And we'll call it authors. Remember, we return a virtual column, so we need to name it. And let's say group by city and see what happens here. So great, we're given the city and the amount of authors per city. But really, to, to make this make sense, we need to use the order by keyword. And we're actually going to look at how we can order things um, by two different, two different values. So we'll remove that semicolon and we'll say, first of all, we want to order this by, again, that count of author ID. We don't type in authors because that's the virtual name. We want the actual function and the column name. Um, and we're going to order it descending. So let's say best to worst or highest to lowest in terms of values. So great. Now, the issue here is that in the lines after the five authors, we have several that are, are, aren't are unique. They share values of authors. So what you could do if you type in city and ascending, we can now see things the way that we, we usually would. And, and we remember, we don't actually have to, to include that ascending. But what we're going to see now is for every line where there's the same amount, so for example, two authors, it goes Berkeley, Palo Alto, Salt Lake City in alphabetical order. And the same pattern follows on. So we see things the way we're used to reading things, highest to lowest and in alphabetical order. So let's look at one more table um, and see if there's anything else we can build on here. We've got select all from sales. Again, we have a store ID and we have a quantity. Fantastic. Now, maybe we want to use another aggregate function that would be powerful when reviewing sales or quantity of sales. Well, average, AVG, is another one. It's not min, max, or sum, but this is probably the most powerful one we would have here um, within our toolkit. So we can say, select the average quantity and store ID, uh, and we give it, again, that virtual column name from sales, and we're going to group them by store ID add our semicolon after we then begin to order by. So here we want to order by the average quantity in descending order. Again, highest to lowest values. And there we go. We now get a nice average. We've built on what we've learned using group by, order by, aggregate functions. It's a really powerful way to sum up sale quantities. So as usual, if you like this content or you find it helpful, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment and share. Next time, we're going to be looking at more advanced concepts, so stick with us. We'll gradually build towards that um, and we'll get there.